Hi friends. I'm very happy to be here tonight and tell you about my project. And I'm going to tell you a little bit about a subject that's near and dear to me. I'm making a polymer clay ofrenda. This is the finished ofrenda. This ofrenda, um, which is, um, is Spanish for altar or offering. Um, and it's uh, a tradition from Dia de los Muertos. I like to keep my ofrenda up year round. And I made one for my uncle. This here is a little close up of the bottom level. Little tidbit about ofrendas. Traditionally, they have three levels. And they also have different elements, like the four elements, whenever possible, if they can be represented or if they can be represented and still apply to the person that they're for. That's always great. This is a little cane that's uh, meant to make my marigolds. So I'm showing you the three sizes of it here. I'm going to use the middle size. I think that fits um, really well around the top of my ofrenda. It's going to make an archway, which is another tradition. Um, ofrendas have archways, and that's meant to be sort of like a portal, a portal that your loved ones can come through. So the arch is another element in an ofrenda that um, if you can work it in and have it still apply, and still be, you know, the, the total composition that you like, it's great. I was able to work it in as the, um, kind of the framework around the, um, the photo of my uncle. I made a little, um, frame, uh, for his photo. I used a little mold. In fact, that red square there with the sugar skulls on it is the mold that I used. On the other side, it's the mold that I used to make the frame. And I used some um, bronze pearl uh, pardo. Nope, it was cernet. I used a uh, cernet also for um, a few of the things on here. I used cernet, pardo, and sculpey in this project. And I'll tell you at the different parts that I used them. Now, right here for this cane um, that I'm making the marigolds with, I'm just using a ball stylus and I'm taking slices of the mid-sized uh, flower cane and I am just digging into the side with the ball stylus to make it have an irregular petal shape. Marigolds are a flower that is associated with Day of the Dead. It's like the flower of Day of the Dead in many of the states in Mexico. It has a very um, strong fragrance. It's not necessarily like a great fragrance, but it has a very strong fragrance and it's meant to lead your loved ones home. It's another way for them to find their way. In Day of the Dead, it it's kind of like a time where you get to be with them again, kind of spiritually, like you can feel their presence there. And so on your ofrenda, you want to have things that are for your loved ones. Now, since this one is just for my uncle, I am putting drumsticks below his picture. It's my uncle was a drummer. So you can see me here adding those drumsticks which I made um, with Sculpey Ecru. And I just tried to add a little wood grain to the sticks and painted the tip white with some acrylic, just regular Craft Smart white acrylic. And I'm just attaching the other one now. When you make your ofrenda, and I hope you do, you can make different, uh, they're called nichos, like different shadow boxes for each person 
or you can put the frames, the framed pictures of your loved one along with items surrounding it. Items that maybe remind you of that person. So as you can see, here's the framed photo um, with the drumsticks below it. Um, you might hear in the background of this a recording um, children going by because it is Halloween. Kind of apropos, today is um, leading into the actual Day of the Dead. And uh, the next couple of days are meant to honor your loved ones. Here I'm showing a cassette tape that I made for my uncle. It has a red G on it because his name was Reggie. So red G's are one of the ways that we would um, write his name. So I put a red G and I wrote Reggie's Mix on the cassette tape because I used to send my uncle mixtapes that I made for him. And he said they were um, really important to him. They were the cornerstone of his life, he said. And he used to listen to them over and over and wear them out. So um, I made him a mixtape for his ofrenda. All right. So sorry, I get a little bit emotional. <laughs> so here I am <clears throat> working on the composition of the levels of this. And um, I used wooden boxes to make the bases for these and then polymer clay um, as the tablecloths and all of the little items. Traditionally, they do use wooden boxes um, to create their ofrendas outdoors for Day of the Dead. Some people also um, keep them up year-round or have an ofrenda room that's kind of adjacent to their home, depending on their home's design and depending on their space needs throughout the year. I keep my ofrenda up all year long. And here I am adding the pan dulce, uh, the glue to the pan dulce and putting it on the second level. Okay, there we have the plate of pan dulce. You can see there are a couple little conchas, a little um, crescent pan dulce, a little Mexican flag cookie, and a Neapolitan cookie. Those are all traditional Mexican pan dulce sweetbreads. And um, I'm also going to show you adding the cassette to the, um, the top level. So there I am adding it. And yeah, so that that's just me attaching it. So there's his little mixtape, his drumsticks, and his framed photo in the top, and the plate of pan dulce. It's good to put foods that you that your loved one liked, your, that they enjoyed while they were alive. Um, everything on the altar on the ofrenda is meant to um, be welcoming. To make them feel at home to kind of like what you would offer them if they came home right now so i um, made my uncle and i'm going to show you right now made my uncle's favorite which was chilaquiles it's like a tortilla chips with sauce and um, this one has avocados and tomatoes and a fried egg on top so I'm making the little um, slices of avocado and tomato for the top. Okay, yeah, we, we have trick-or-treaters coming in and out, so we're knocking at the door, so we're giving them candy. There's a little pause for that. I'm using my daughter's snakes of clay to make this avocado and um, tomato slices. I like to think about when I make this stuff, these tiny foods, especially when I'm making them for an ofrenda. For me, it feels like I'm cooking for the person I love. And even though I'm not cooking it, I'm making it and I'm making it for them. So for me, there's a lot of meaning in this. And um, 
you should take your time. Take your time when you craft. Take your time when you make something like this. Don't rush through it. It's meant to be a time to really reflect. And I know it might seem silly because I'm making like miniature food, but it's not silly to me. And I, it doesn't have to be silly. It, it can be meaningful to you too. So I'm adding the little avocado slices. And like I said, I was taking my time making this. And um, after I make the avocado slices, I'm going to uh, make the little fried egg for the top. Whatever kind of food your loved one like, you can make it out of polymer clay. That's one of the wonderful things about polymer clay. And what is also awesome about a project like this is that you can use scrap clay for all of it because you're going to, you know, paint these things mostly. For the most part, you can paint all of the stuff that you make for, for them, put the details on there, make it any color you want. Um, and also, since they're miniatures, <laughs> it doesn't require much clay at all. So it's great. It's a great project. Um, you know, if you're conserving clay and it can still be just really wonderful and exactly how you want it without having to use a lot of clay. Um, I made the little plates with um, a measuring spoon mold. And it worked out really well. And uh, so I made the large platter with the large part of the measuring spoon and the smaller one with um, the smaller, <laughs> I'm sorry about my alerts, um, with the smaller uh, part of the measuring spoon. So the plate for the chilequiles I used for the smaller part. Okay, I'm finished with my avocado. Now, when you make your ofrenda, keep in mind that you want to put not just food, but you can also put drinks, you could put uh, candy, you can put their favorite, their favorite hobby, things that, things that they like to do. Like, I wanted to even add later on to this ofrenda, my, um, a little ukulele. My uncle used to play all kinds of instruments, so I wanted to add a little ukulele because those remind me of him too. And, um... I was going to do a little bit more sleuthing to find out what his favorite drink is for this because so far I have, haven't heard any really like direct answers about that. And I never, it's not something you ask people <laughs> on a regular basis. Hey, what is your favorite drink? You know, and I, so I never got a chance to ask him myself. And I'm going to find out and add it to this little ofrenda. It's another wonderful thing about a project like this because it doesn't have to be done. You can add things over time. So you can, uh, you know, get it done and then initially, and then whenever you think of something, just make that tiny thing and add it to it. It's as simple as having some clay and some super glue, and then you, you can keep evolving. Here I'm making the fried egg just some white Sculpey, and then that's actually Topaz Pardo that I used for the yolk. I'm making my tiny fried egg. It's hard to see on that white tile, and it's so tiny. But it's going to go on top of the chilaquiles. And next I'm going to add the, the tomatoes and then the egg. Now, as far as the elements go for your ofrenda, the four elements can re be represented in a number of ways. Um, a lot of times there's this um, beautiful uh, colored sawdust called, called asarin that they use um, to make these gorgeous pictures and they're supposed to also be representative of the earth element um, on an ofrenda or in front of it. Sometimes if you've got plenty of space and you're outdoors and you're not in grass, you can make like these beautiful pictures with the colored sawdust. It's gorgeous. But you can use that. You can actually use some earth. Um, you know, use some earth and just put when you add your flowers. Those can be your representation of earth. Um, you can put a plant, which is another um, addition that I wanted to add. I was going to add later on to my uncle's ofrenda a little cactus 
because that's where he met his wife at a, a club called the cactus and so that's just a little addition and these little things that you can add as you think of them um, are wonderful it's just wonderful to think about that person and always keep them in your mind keep them in your heart it's a way of keeping them alive and with you um, as far as the fire element that one's pretty pretty simple you can just put some candles and a lot of candles are used on day of the dead so I've added some candles to mine and for those candles I used um, our wooden bead kit from tiny Pandora I uh, just used the smallest little barrel shaped bead and um, painted it white and then filled it with liquid clay white liquid clay to be the dripping wax and then I uh, placed a little flame um, in the liquid clay and baked it so the flame was just um, like a three-part blend that I made with um, red orange and yellow and it was actually part of the um, the serape so I had some of it left over and I made little flames with it just shaped it into a little flame and stuck it right in the middle of the bead where the liquid clay was so that the liquid clay dripped down and worked out to be a really cute little candle for the sides of the um, the top of the ofrenda here I am adding the marigolds this is kind of like a um, finishing touch where I'm making that archway that I spoke about earlier. So um, I'm just adding them to each side. Um, and again with the elements. So um, the next element is air and it can be represented um, by your papel picado, um, which is the paper um, the, they're kind of like um, a snowflake in that they're, they usually are cut out um, and folded and then cut out but that's when you make them by hand nowadays they use a laser <laughs> but um, they are a really beautiful and traditional um, part of Dia de los Muertos and so you can see in mine uh, I have them on the second level and I actually used real paper ones that I uh, went ahead and decoupage to that second level um, so that they would really be paper and that element would be represented and they uh, can represent your air element some people also use um, incense or um, they use uh, pinwheels to represent the air if it's sometimes uh, when you want to represent children on your ofrenda too and you can use that for your air element um, because uh, they move in the wind it also adds some nice movement and it's a lovely addition to your friend, especially if you're doing yours outdoors. Um, let's see, what should I, and then finally, um, water. As, as far as elements go, water would be represented by water. <laughs> a lot of people put a bowl of water um, so that they can, their loved ones can wash up when they get there. It's kind of a, a really traditional. Um, aspect of an ofrenda or you can put a glass of water or you can put a glass of whatever beverage you want on your ofrenda so those are the elements and then as I spoke of before there there are traditionally three levels and um, so when I'm adding mine I actually worked from the top down so I'm at the end here I'm completing the the top of mine and then I'm adding the bottom last also pictured here and also you can see I added sugar skulls um, which are uh, a tradition for Dia de los Muertos when they're actually made of sugar sometimes wrapped in colored foil and then they use um, colored frostings to decorate them I made mine out of polymer clay it's just some white sculpey and I used my ball stylus and my needle tool to make my um, sugar skulls also used um, obviously here you can see my glass mat my tiny Pandora glass mat and my tiny Pandora oven mitt so there you can also see that there's Pan de Muerte bread of the dead another tradition that is added to ofrendas pretty self-explanatory it's bread made for the dead 
and it's um, always in that shape or occasionally a braided shape that kind of resembles a little person. All right, so you can see that I've um, added most of my marigolds. All that's left to do is secure it to the base and add more marigolds. And then you will see the finished item in just a moment here. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you'll watch the rest of the Tiny Pandora Design Team videos and I hope you have a happy Dia de los Muertos.